can answer this question. You're absolutely correct. Indians have poor respect for themselves. Indian faculty don't respect their own colleagues do any good research. And therefore, if you train to their own colleague, their own value. If you look at our scientific advisory committees, we will invite foreigners, we won't invite our colleagues. So it just, our academic uh, leaders have poor self-worth for themselves and for their own colleagues. And you can't change that. So if you want to be in academia, play the game, go abroad, go to a big <laughs> shop. And... Hello. Uh, one question there. We'll come back. We'll come back. Just one, yeah, one yeah. second. So uh, mine is less of a question, more of a counter uh, thing to one of the points which was raised, which was like one of the things was like know thyself, uh, which is like one of the which is often raised as a critical issue while you're kind of deciding. But uh, I just want to raise one point that many of the times you don't uh, you have a very fixed idea of what you are. So for example, when I was doing my PhD, like we also used to have these talks and like I had sort of listed down like what I didn't want to do. So science writing was one of the things which I was like, okay, I don't think I'm going to be really bad at it. And like I had sort of um, checked it off. So by chance I came into science, like so by some whatever, some route, I started writing one of my first articles. And uh, by the time I finished writing my article, I just loved it. And I realized that this was something I wanted to do. So sometimes the know thyself thing is sometimes overrated. Sometimes uh, it's like, you so rather than having a fixed idea of yourself because we have a very conditioned idea of yourself based on what our interactions are during our PhD. So sometimes having a more fluid idea of what you are or what your passions are also helps. So and also some kind of programs maybe either during or after your PhD like some small stints can help you explore that even so one like one shouldn't like check off something even like okay there's something I hate without even getting into it because sometimes you don't realize what you are unless you are in it. So yeah. So, so I, I would just just uh, kind of give one statement. I completely agree. See, any experiment also, unless right. you do it, you would not know whether it's it's going to be a successful experiment or it's going right. to fail. Right. How do you know yourself? Only when you actually witness that situation, you're part of that situation and you've experienced it, right? right. So it's very important to start thinking, at least in today's world, that right. what you want to do, what are your interests, what are your values. Right. There are these beautiful programs available now on, on internet where you can find out and right. kind of narrow down your choices and then start experimenting with these. If possible, go do an internship right. or bring these people in your network, start your conversations right. and that will really help you to know yourself better. Right, yeah. But even after doing all that homework, it's possible that you land up in a job mm -hmm. which you do not like. Right. You feel that you are not fit for that or you are not enjoying it. So be flexible, be ready to change. It's not that if you've got into one place, right. you are stuck there forever. So that flexibility, that confidence should also be part of uh, you as a person. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll take one more question. I have an observation, I just want to comment on it. So, uh, you are saying initially that uh, uh, there are a lot of transferable skills from PhD to other things. But what I feel is, given the situation that 1 in 10 PhD candidates end up in an academic position, uh, I have a feeling that most of the training we get in our PhD is to be in an academic position. Like it's almost like an extra that we get these extra skills. Like, the, like when, when I'm in my lab, what I learn is how to be an academic or how to run a lab. Uh, so. Do you think this is true? Do you think our PhD should be a little broader because most of the candidates end up with other kinds of jobs? Should the PhD itself be structured in such a way that you don't just get trained to be an academic but also a broader scientific career? Yeah, I think part of it was kind of mentioned by Ram, so I'll leave the you know, answer. I think, again, you, it's uh, how you approach the problem, right? It is important to uh, what PhD treats you is, here is a problem, hypothesis that you want to test. In order to test the hypothesis, I have to learn how to do this set of experiments. I have to become real an expert in this set of experiments. I collect the data. I need to figure out how to analyze the data. I need to figure out how, what this data means in the context of the existing published data. All of these are transferable skills. So I don't know why you think it is not transferable skills. You learnt it with, you, you're confusing the object with the learning.
correct and your lab meetings and your departmental meetings your journal clubs seminars. your seminars uh, your conference visits uh, all of that are part of and you're you know when you're interacting with the vendor it might take three months to get whatever you get here but those are also transferable skills when 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 somebody from kaijin comes and knocks on your door and you're talking that those are also transferable skills. Yeah. Or when your paper is rejected. Your ability to argue and get it published. I mean, it's important <laughs> skill. Yeah, just one more. Like, you know, any interview you go, people ask you, are you a team person? Right? So you're dealing with all your colleagues in the lab, your PhD mates, your seniors, your juniors. How do you interact with them? All this is something that you're learning. It's just that, again, uh, we are never told that these are certain value skills that we are acquiring while going through this process. It's, yeah. it's maybe now we have to be just aware that, yes, we are picking up these skills which can be uh, transferred to any other domain. Technical skills are different. You can always learn them later as well, but, you know. Correct. And it's a myth that academia is not the real world. I don't agree with that. Academia is also part of the real world, right? There are ivory towers in each of the domains that you go into. There are dons, there are mafias in government, in industry, in academia, of course, we know of, <laughs> and, and in nonprofits as well, right? So the idea is not that, oh, leaving academia, you will not run into other mafia systems. You will. Right? But the point here, what Smitha correctly said, is that there's a lot of, this is part of the real. So you are doing real experiments. There is a project code you are using, which means money. There's also real money. You are buying stuff for your lab instrumentation. That is real until AI replaces your, uh, you know, experimental design. That may not be real. but. Everything is real until now. So anybody, and you've got to have that respect for yourself and your work to go and stand and say that, please, when I'm here for the interview, do not say my PhD was not real work. Because your people, your sales people used to come and knock at my door to sell things. So were they selling to a non-real person? Obviously not. Right? So everything is real. And, but yeah, every domain has its ivory towers that we have to come down to. But it, 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 academia is the real world, so it's a part of the real world. So. <clears throat> the panel members will be around after this uh, discussion, so what I request is the, the wrap-up of the session. I'll ask each of the panel members to say their take-homes. I'll start with that. Oh, me. <laughs> <laughs> Cheating here no, because it is arranged because no, it was arranged, and I was thinking I written down something. So let me <laughs> say that. <laughs> so I think take calculated risks. Okay, at 45, I mean, I'm thinking of maybe next six, nine, ten months, one year, I won't do anything. Take breaks and reach out to people. But the most important thing that I've learned in my last 20 years of career is that mental health is very important. So do reach out to the most you know, people that you think you can talk to, uh, who can listen to you. So that is, that is what I will say, because the world is really an oyster, whether you are French or not and can eat oyster or not, I don't know. But the world is really an oyster that you can go and, 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 and you can have the cake and eat it too. Calculated risk, if you want to jump to something else, do reduce the informational asymmetry uh, by talking to people, getting to know, doing short internship, uh, embedding yourself, uh, use a VR, uh, virtual reality, and look into YouTube uh, videos, whatever you want to do. But learn that, and then see people's career and trajectory, how it has happened. So, and information right now is right there. So, you, you, can, you can do that. Thank you. Sambhui? So, calculate the risk. Okay, my take home message is something that my postdoc advisor once told me. A couple of years into my postdoc, on a single day I got a rejection for a paper and a grant. Uh, and I was like, not working, I'm quitting. Uh, and she told me that, no, you're not going to quit today. Uh, and this is a message I want to give you guys as well. Uh, she was like, today you do not understand what you're going to contribute to the field. Today you do not know what future lies for you. Today you're not confident yourself about staying in this field. And so you're just, you don't know your potential. 
the day your grant is out the day your paper is out the day you know that you can get a job after this and you yet come and tell me that no i don't want to do this i'll let you go uh, and this is what we actually went through i stayed on for a year and a half and we finished the grant we finished the paper and i still went and told her that i, I choose not to be in academia because i prefer something else uh, so for all of those in doubt do not leave academia simply because you think your phd is not working out okay think really hard of what you can do in this field and then choose to live if you still want thank you so i guess uh, very quickly uh, know yourself well because this is a really competitive world now know yourself really well make some informed choices have good mentors i guess i'm just going to repeat whatever we have been talking but just so that you know the message that we want to pass on uh, stays with you have good networks in doubt talk to your friends colleagues never keep it within you and as satya also brought this issue of mental health always be open to discussions pp very open that's that's another message that i would also want to uh, give out and uh, enjoy life you know it's it's life is much much bigger than one career it it it's not that you know this doesn't happen means your life has ended no you will have another path in front of you if you are open to it and uh, you know ready to walk down that path so be open and enjoy life and be happy so i'm jochna just walked in so i'm going to say i tell you what i think of life in the way jochna accuses me of what i do think big dream it is science fiction that makes science the idea that you can change the world is true try that it's how is a different question okay don't think small life is not about making money getting a job procreating feeding for your kids and dying that cows do dogs do animals do If you want to be one of that's fine with me don't associate yourself with me that's all Think, think, think the world. Can I do one last joke? <laughs> I, I I was reading some of these uh, 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 wisdom nuggets, and actually this statement came from. The statement was, "You're going to end up thinking anyway. Why don't you think big?" You know who said that? Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> one one last joke madhu showed uh, to be okay with the discomfort and i am a colitis patient i my eighth is god forbid that you you know any of you has that. <laughs> we go through incontinent see right you know we have abdominal pain um and you, so when you have when your guts are churning and you need to go to the toilet that's the biggest discomfort you can have and i've been okay with that for 20 years so that's okay you you really can be okay with all the stress in life <laughs> so uh we're going to wrap it up and then i thank all the panel members for uh, for spending their time and then uh, and claps for again the panel members once more please and i also thank the student uh, ccmb students for such an excellent show being arranged thank you again the organizing company we thank you one thing if you want to know about entrepreneurship think big which is a program of byrax <laughs> so please come and talk to madhu and ram ji and see how we can transform your life in a big way thank you thank you very much Um, I request the panelists and moderator to please be seated for a couple more minutes. Yeah, a big, big thank you to all of you uh, for this session. It's been a fantastic discussion, and I'm sure everything that you've spoken about today resonates with the um, students. And thank you not only for this discussion, but all the efforts that you've put into this right from the moment that we got in touch with you. And um, as a gesture of um, our gratitude, we would like to present a small memento. Can I say something? If anybody wants to reach out, just to have a conversation, please find me on LinkedIn. 
we can arrange for half an hour or talk or you know, all of that is open for you, not, not a problem at all. Yeah, same, same. Order, not tonight. Yes, we'll share our email IDs as well. You know, India Bioscience, again, um, you can just reach out to us at hello at indiabiosciences.org. Great. Yeah, we can actually share that with all the participants. All right. So, um, as a gesture of our gratitude, we have a small token from Team HiSci. It's a small sapling from our horticulture department and a custom designed coffee mug so that every time you have coffee, you now remember HiSci. And I can take as a back in my but will they allow me to take as a carry on yes. like Yeah, yeah, we've taken care of that. Mukun tweeted about it. He took one. Okay. Yeah, he was stopped at security, but he made it. I would take it. Alright, um I request Madhu to uh, please present the mementos to the panelists. Can I have the honor to present Madhu in the end? Sure. <laughs> so one thing you have to learn is to ask what you want. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Ramaswamy. Be shameless. Be like your supervisor. Dr. Smita Jain. <laughs> Dr. Shamavi Naik. Right. Dr. Satya Dash. <laughs> and I now request Dr. Satya Dash to present the mementos to Madhu. <laughs> to Madhu. Thank you very much, guys.